Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another visual pattern challenge. We've got a pattern of red dots here, step one, step two, step three, step four even. So they've given us a lot of information. Your challenge is to predict the number of red dots in step five. If you can do that, can you predict the number in step 43? And can you write an equation that could be used to predict the number of red dots in any step at all? So that's the challenge. If you'd like to accept it, pause the video and give it a try. All right, so just looking at this, it seems like it's getting bigger pretty quickly. And I'm thinking off the bat, this is probably quadratic because it, the, the rows are, are getting longer, but there's also, we're getting more rows. So it looks like we're expanding in two directions at the same time. So I'm thinking quadratic. Um, Let's actually just see if we can get some visual intuition about this to predict step five. So <clears throat> in terms of the number of uh, columns, I've got one, two, three, four. So I think there are going to be five columns here. So one, two, three, four, five. And they get longer and longer. First, it starts four, and then four and six, and then four and six and eight. Uh -huh. Four, six, eight, ten. So it looks like we're always adding two and keeping the old ones. So four, six, eight. 10, 12 is what I would expect. So let's see, what is that? Um, 20, 30, uh, looks like that's 40. So I'm thinking 40 red dots in step five. All right, now let's take a little look at our numbers so we can verify, see if this really is quadratic or maybe it's something else going on. So I'll put the step number and the number of dots so in step one, we've got four. In step two, we're adding six to that, so that's 10. In step three, we're adding eight more, so that's 18. And in step four, we're adding 10 more on top of that, so that's uh, that's uh, 28. And then I'm gonna put go ahead and put step five in here too, just so we have that data as well. We're predicting 40. So if we take the difference between each step, here we get 6, and then 8, and then 10, and then 12. And that's this should represent actually that last row, the thing that gets added every time. This is not a constant, so we know it's not linear. If we take the difference of the differences, we get 2 there, and 2 there, and 2 there. So we know this is indeed a quadratic. We get that constant in the difference of the differences. It's a quadratic because this number is 2. The, uh, the leading coefficient is going to be 1. So we've got an x squared as our leading term here. Now, hmm, how should we go about this? One, one way is to block out an x squared in every uh, spot and then see what's left over. I think what I'm going to do actually is just uh, try to make another chart here, and we're going to manipulate the, the numbers. So I'm going to put the step number and the dots again. And what I'm going to try to do is rewrite this with the biggest square. So in step two, four, well, that would be two squared. In step uh, two, let's see, I could get a nine out of there, so that's three squared, but there's one left over. So I'm just gonna jot that as a plus one. Let's try this with step three. So there's a four squared in there, that's 16, and that leaves over two. And in step four, There'd be a 5 squared in there. That's 25, and that leaves over 3. Ah, I think I'm getting something interesting here. And in the fifth one, we've got a 6 squared in there, which would be 36, and that would leave over 4. And actually, if I think of this 2 squared as 4 plus 0, it makes perfect sense now. So for me, it was easier to see this pattern in the numbers if I just rewrote them in a clever way rather than to try to uh, sort it out visually. That might not be the case for you. Maybe you can see this really clearly um, in, in the visual representation. Um, for me, it was easier this way. Um, so what's going on here is we're, we're having a square that's one more than the step number. So in step one, it's two squared. In step two, it's three squared. The way I would write that is x plus one quantity squared. So that's taking one greater than the step number and then squaring it. So that gives us this chunk. And then we've got this, we're adding something and it's one less than the step number. So we're gonna add X minus one. So in step one, one minus one is zero, we're adding zero. In step two, two minus one is one, we're adding one. So that should correspond to what's happening here. 
I think I am going to go ahead and foil this part out and simplify. I'm guessing there's maybe something that'll cancel here. So this would be x squared and uh, 2x plus 1. Uh, and then we've got plus x minus 1. Yeah, we've got a plus 1 and a minus 1. And this 2x and x can go together. So our final equation here should be x squared plus 3x. And we might actually want to test that really quickly just to make sure we didn't make any mistakes along the way. So x squared, 1 squared, plus 3 times 1. Well, that would be 4 in step 1. That looks good. How about in step 2? 2 squared plus 3 times 2. So that would be 4 plus 6. That's 10. That's what we're getting. How about in step 3? We'll do this one more. So 3 squared plus 3 times 3. So that's 9 plus 9 is 18. Yeah, that's exactly what we're getting. You can go ahead and check that with step 4 and step 5 if you like, but I'm convinced that we've got the right equation, and it's y equals x squared plus 3x. So that's something that would have been a little harder for me to see here, but uh, you know maybe you saw it visually. Be interested to know. To figure out how many in step 43, we just need to put 43 in for x in our equation now. So y equals 43 squared plus 3 times 43, and 43 squared is 1849, and 43 times 3, that's 129, and all of that should equal uh, 1978. So I'm getting 1,978 red dots in step 43. Is that what you got? Did you arrive at an equation? If so, how did you get there? I'd be really interested to know. Thanks, everybody.